I'm pleased to say I'm joined by the former world master and a former world championship finalist, Mark Dudbridge. Thanks for the time, Mark. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Morning, welcome. Great to get you on and uh, we'll give our listeners a bit of background. We've been uh, trying to arrange this call uh, during the week, but we've, we've sent you somewhere else. So where are you calling from today? Um, well, I'm currently in the hotel in Chiswick uh, with my sponsors, Marshall Tuflex and CEF Electrical. And uh, kind enough to be taking me to Twickenham tomorrow to watch England against France. So, uh, yeah, a real treat. Very nice, Willis. The, the first time we've had you on our show as a guest, there's lots to get to. But let's just start with the World Seniors because you made your return on TV for their World Championship around four weeks ago. Now, what was it like going back on that Circus Tavern stage? Yeah, I, on reflection, a real, a real buzz. I was very nervous to start with. I didn't know what what to expect, really, being back in front of the cameras. And, uh, yeah, so I think I put a good show in and probably could have done better in the end. And for a lot of darts fans watching, it was the first time that they'd seen you play for a, a little while. I, I said on our show, you were one of the players who surprised me the most. I call it the Q action, but your throw, I thought, was one of the best in the field. So how did you feel going up there playing again? Yeah, I felt really good. Obviously, uh, over the years, I've had, I've had numerous shoulder problems, operations, and uh, yeah, my throw let me down, and hence why I sort of fell out of the game and uh, and disappeared. But uh, it all seems good now, and you know, and that's right. And uh, the one eighties are coming, and a few big finishes, and yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing for the future again. Good to see, and um, you averaged in the high 80s in all three of your games, losing out in a close quarter final with Kevin Payne. How did you reflect on the weekend when you made that trip home back to Bristol? Um, yeah, well, I've, I've mixed, mixed emotions really. I think if you'd have said I'd have made the quarter finals not knowing what to expect, I'd have probably taken it. But after getting there and um, you know winning the first set 3 0 and 2 0 up in the next set, I'd probably, probably feel a little bit disappointed in the end. But uh, fair play to Kevin, he come back strong and uh, took some good finishes out and uh, yeah he progressed and from this new chapter in your career let's circle back to the very start for you in darts and I was reading on, on your website you first got interested in the game in your early teens and, and Dennis Priestley was an idol of yours you liked watching him play so where did it go from there how did you then start playing yourself well I started playing um, back in the day with, with my dad who was a fantastic player in Bristol yeah, I just got introduced into the darts teams and um, it wasn't it wasn't too long before I got asked to sort of play county darts and um, one, one good thing about it, they wanted me to play county darts when I was about 14, 15 and my dad wouldn't let me play. He said, you're too young for it, it's not going to do you any good and he kind of held me back, which was, uh, looking back now, was, which was a blessing because there was, there was a number of young players at the time who went into the county side and, and were never heard of much later kind of ruined their confidence so uh, yeah I owe my dad one for that well you mentioned those early days this is around the, the late 80s early 90s so what was the dart scene like growing up back then did you get involved in, in the pub leagues and, and super league once you started to make a name yeah. for yourself yeah yeah uh, the, the dart scene in Bristol has always been very strong you know it's great dart players in Bristol so um, I was lucky enough to play for all the best teams and I had great advice great gra- grounding from the experienced players and you know they always sort of telling you you know what you were doing wrong or and also which is important what you were doing well and uh, yeah I had a I had a great school in Bristol so I was very lucky very lucky well speaking of making a name for yourself you certainly did that in the 2002 World Masters then at the age of 29 winning the title in Bridlington first of all how did you get into the Masters that year was it through a, a local qualifier yeah, yeah, I qualified through the uh, through the west of England, and it was it was quite funny because I I just joined the PDC and I and I played one tournament in Kilmarnock and I loved it. it. You know, it was back in the day where you know even in those days the setup was much better than the BDO. All the boards were nice and everything was really good. And I just happened to qualify for the World Masters, and um, I said to my my wife at the time said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I want to come out in the smoke at the Super 7. That was my ball. And um, she said, how about the World Masters? I said, well, I'll go out there for some practice. <laughs> and um, yeah, I rocked up there and won it. <laughs> so, um, so all of a sudden I was number one in the world in the BDO, which was, you know, so I had a, a big decision to make, but I stuck to my guns and stayed with the PDC. And um, I eventually come out in the smoke at the Super 7, which was, which was my angle. Yeah, we'll come on to that in, in a moment. I was going to ask you, actually, in terms of your experience playing in tournaments like that before the World Masters, you mentioned you, you just played your first event in the PDC. Had you had any other experience playing in any big Opens going up against the big names before that? No, 
not really. I mean, the years ago, we used to go down to Pontins at Breen Sands, which was the biggest tournament that, um, you know, started off in the youths. But uh, no, I, I didn't I didn't go to many tournaments, really. But um, at, at the time, I was playing really well at County. I think I had, I had three average on the trot, which was um, all over like 100 average. You know, well, it was, it was it was done in three dots in those days, so like a 34 average one match, and I had a 30. Five seven, then I had a thirty something. So you know, I was I was playing well going into it. So um, it wasn't a lot of it wasn't a big surprise for a lot of people. But you know, I didn't expect to win the World Masters. And uh, yeah, within a couple of days, I'm on on TV on the BBC. <laughs> you know, it just it just all went my way. Yeah, I mean, what what a story it was. I mean, you knock out the defending champion Raymond Van Barneveld in the early rounds that weekend. Yeah. So at what point are you starting to think I've, I've got a serious chance of going all the way here? Um, I didn't know. Well, not until I lifted the trophy. I, all I had in my mind, as soon as I made the TV stage, I thought, well, I've watched these guys on the telly and they don't throw them out the 20s. You know, just don't go out there and make yourself a um, that was my That was my aim. And, uh, yeah, I remember playing Steve Beaton. I think it was a semi-final and uh, he's obviously a massive favourite. And I just thought, don't make a mug of yourself. But I got halfway through the match. I thought, hang on a minute, I could win this. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, yeah, it, it all just, it all happened. It all happened for a reason. And um, yeah, I just kept the dart straight and I, I got over the line in one uh, a fantastic tournament. Yeah, and I mean, obviously the, the semi-final with, with Steve Beaton, that's a, a game that will stick in the memory, winning that one in, in a last set. And then a short break later, you come back for the final, beat Tony West 7-4 to win the title. And what are the memories 20 years on that have stuck with you from that weekend? Well, um, um Myself and my wife, after the event, we went into the uh, chip shop opposite the venue and ordered fish and chips, I think, and we both looked at each other and just kind of went, what happened now? <laughs> you, know, I was, you know, I was on the BBC and I've just won, you know, the second biggest tournament in the world in the BDO calendar and it, it was, we just got to each other and she went, well done. And I went, well, you know, what went on now? I've, I've, I've done, done okay. No, he definitely did. And uh, as you touched on earlier, you made the decision to stick it with the uh, the PDC rather than the BDO. Yeah. Back then, did the Masters winner get a spot in, at the Lakeside? Or, and no, one... no. They, I, I, I believe they changed the rules after me winning it because I, I, I got invited down to the embassy to watch the World Championships by another spot. So they, you know, I don't think they expected somebody to come from nowhere and and win it but I think they changed the rules the year after so the, the winner of the World Masters got into uh, into Lakeside so if, if that was the rule back in the day it could have been a whole different story because I wouldn't have been able to turn down Lakeside as you say just before the, the Masters you had a little go at the, at the PDC 2003 we see you make strides over in the PDC you're playing in a, a lot of the TV events the UK Open the World Match Play the World Grand Prix you won a couple of titles on the floor as well that year so how did you find that move into becoming more of a, a regular face in the TV events yeah it just, it just seemed a natural natural progression um, I, was, I was really confident I, I, you know I had no, no fear of anybody I wanted to play against the best and uh, ultimately I did and um, probably looking back now I probably should have won a little bit more but um, hey ho you know, I'm, still, I'm still proud of my achievements back in the day and of course everyone remembers your run to the world championship final but the year before your debut at the Circus Tavern at the smoke of, of the tavern you knock out the defending champion John Park in the last set and get to the quarterfinals did that run show that you could mix it with the elite you could be one of them as well Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, John, every time I see John Platt now, because I think I beat him the year after as well, he said, oh, not you again, you ruined my career. <laughs> <laughs> only, in, only in jest, because obviously he's had a, had a wonderful career. But, um, yeah, to, off to beat John Platt, and he was, he was world champion. Was, uh, yeah, it's, it's great memories. 2004, you get to your first major final in the PDC at the World Match Play, and I was having a look at the results earlier. That second round, five out of the eight games went past the best of 25, including yours with Alan Moore and a little. So, what was it like going into a game, going deep into a game like that, and coming out on top? Well, yeah, I think he, once you get to that point, you're just taking it one leg at a time, and uh, it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation to be in because you're trying to hold your throne and you think, right, I'll break his throne now, and he goes off 140, 140. Right, you've got to start again. You've got to hold your throne, and yeah, it's, it's a tough position to be in, but um, you've just got to stick in there and be strong and just wait for that one 
opportunity where you uh, yeah. where you get a shot to uh, to win by two legs. Phil Taylor got the better of you in that final, but your paths would cross again six months later at the Tavern in the World Championship final that week. You came through some tough battles all the way through to get to that final. How do you look back on that run to the final at the Tavern? Yeah, I've played some, played some great players there. And um, obviously the semi-final uh, sticks in my mind against Wayne Mardell. He's a local favourite. He was a favourite at the bookies. You know, he had all the crowd behind him. And, uh, but yeah, I, I relished the challenge and uh, yeah, man, it's just get through to the final which was um, which was so you oh, amazing amazing draw. and I fancied I fancied the final I fancied better than the world match so play a few months it. prior I was probably caught in the headlights a little bit with Phil Taylor but yeah. in the world final I fancied it well the final itself with Phil you lose out 7-4 in sets but it was close all the way through oh, it was 3 right. all and Phil started to pull away at 6-3 you got a, a set back but in the end it was had a look earlier two tough plus finishes in the last legs from That's Phil getting over the line so the what do you recall from that ball. experience playing in the final yeah I, I think um, I think Phil was 6-3 up and we went out at the back for a break and uh, they started bringing the check and the trophy out and that, that got me back up I went I, and I, I went this ain't over and I pointed at Phil I went this ain't over and I think I won the next set but that was um, that was a big rush of adrenaline and uh, probably just dropped off a little bit after that but um, yeah, no, I was up for it. I, I, you know, I thought I could win it. I didn't, I didn't go into in the in the world match play final against Phil. Phil probably, you know, I was sort of taking the experience and trying to build. But I was for the world final. I, I thought I could win it. Well, off the back of that, we see you get invited to the first Premier League. Back then, it was a, a new concept for darts. How did you find that year being a part of the very first one and only just missing out on the playoffs on the the last league night in the end? Yeah, well, it's, it was um, it was. It was a difficult one on the last night because I was getting married, I think, on the Sunday. And I didn't know whether I was going to qualify through. We had to cancel our honeymoon because we didn't know where I was going to make get through. And then, yeah, ultimately, I didn't get through on the night, but it was a lot of pressure there. Um, I, said, I, I think I probably should have got through to the last four. I think I Peter Manley. I can't remember exactly, but um, yeah, I didn't need to do a lot. And um, I think I lost both matches. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's history now. But yeah, it would have been fantastic to make the last four and that. But travelling around the country for the Premier League, was it was unheard of at the time. And it was, uh, it was some experience, I'd say. And you think to, to where it is now that the Premier League all these years later, they're in some, some huge arenas, not just in the UK, across Europe as well. A, a lot of people tuning in every Thursday, attending the Premier League now as well. How do you look at it now, being in, in the first one, to see how far it's got now? Oh, it's, it's just amazing, isn't it? The amount of people they're playing in front of. But um, it, is, it is difficult, the, the travelling. Obviously, it wasn't as bad when, when I was in it, but these guys are travelling now you know, in the Premier League. And then they've got to go and play in the Pro Tours on the weekend. And it, and it's a huge sort of drop down, and you know I, I admire players going to the pro tour on the weekend after playing in the Premier League and and get to the final or, or win one because it takes them doing you know physically and mentally. It, it, it's, it's, it's the Premier League so good for the, for the players, the exposure, the money. You know, it's. Uh, they should be pleased they're in it. One moment back to you I have to ask you about, and I'm sure it comes up often at a certain time each year, is the World Grand Prix and that tiger oh, yeah. with Andy Jenkins in, in 2007. You missed your first nine darts at the double to start, but you come back and win it. How did you keep your belief that you could win that leg? Um, well, I was, I, was, I was playing with some different equipment and some, and some uh, these tiny little flights, and um, I was practising so well. And, and once I got away, and I think I went out in 12 darts, and, and I knew I was going to get it. We were winning. That was why I got excited, because I thought, yeah, I've actually, the practice game has gone on to the, on to the stage. And it's in leg, but it just, it just felt right. And, uh, and it was just a big, big relief, really. I think I uh, probably embarrassed myself a little bit, but uh, it keeps getting shown on TV, so it's not too bad. <laughs> uh, you came out on the right side of it. And uh, yeah, you, were, yeah. you were still a, a regular at a lot of the TV events after that, Blackpool, Dublin, up until 2011. But then the, the deep runs, dried up for you looking back now can you put your finger on what caused that drop in results at the time yeah it was just it's just the shoulder injuries and the, and the problems I had throwing I mean I was I couldn't practice 
went more than 10 minutes. So you know, get with, a date off, just do. We'd have my arms sort of hanging off. and uh, just yourself. Yeah, it was just a combination of things, obviously. If you, you, you think of practice, you don't know what you're going to get out there. And then I was I sort of like getting beat on the floor by players that so I thought, I'd, you know, I should, I should win and, or, or should beat. And, uh, yeah, it was just a combination of loss of confidence then. And, also and obviously all the ability, because my shoulder problems went. And, uh, but I was still in, I was still in some events, which was, um, which was quite difficult in those, in those times. Because you, because I knew I wasn't playing well enough, really. How do you sort of try and go through that period of time? It's obviously a, a difficult time in your career and you've, you've got the shoulder problems. How, how did you try and get through that period? Well, I tried everything. I was, I was having massages, um, um, acupuncture. I, I, I paid for some treatment at a uh, local boot play. It was like £500 a time, this uh, laser treatment in my shoulder. I spent lots and lots of money and, and yeah, none of it worked. Um, so I, I was still searching to try and try and play well, but it was just it was just impossible in the end. And after dropping off the tour at that point, we've seen Q School introduced this the, the Challenge Tour as well. Well, we've had a, a lot of players talk on the show about how tough Q School is. You've been a, a few times. How difficult yeah. is it to try and produce your best starts in that one week to get your card back? Um, yeah, well, I think you know. With, with I still had shoulder problems at the time and to play for that period of time over so many days was, you know, it was impossible, really. But in brain, you still think you can do it. And, uh, you know, but, um, yeah, obviously it just wasn't wasn't good enough when I was in there, in there to get through. And um, that was, you know, that's, it's hard to take, really. Away from Q School on, on the Challenge Tour, we see, saw you win two titles in 2017. That got you back on the tour, finishing second on the order. What was it like getting back on the tour again? And as you say, with the, the, the shoulder problems you had to win through on the Challenge Tour, which we know they're long days as well. Yeah, yeah. well, I managed, managed to get through that. And obviously, I knew it was a different challenge on the uh, back on the Pro Tour. And I think this is what a lot of players, they realise they rock up at Q School and they think, oh, yeah, we want our tour, I want a tour card. They don't understand how difficult it is and, and the grind of it. And, you know, you can lose your confidence within a couple of weeks, uh, play your best darts and just get beat. So um, I was under no illusions. You know, the, the Challenge Tour is a different, different kettle of fish to the Pro Tour. But um, obviously, once I did get my tour card, I... You know, I tried try my best, but you know, my game wasn't good enough, and, and that's that's the harsh realities of it. And a, a couple more before we let you go. Obviously, a, a lot of darts took a break during the pandemic. We've since you since seen you back playing in the Modus League towards the end of last year. Then that invite for the World Seniors. What was your reaction when you got the invite? Was it a straight yes, or did you take some time to consider it? No, no, straight yes. I, I, you know, I was. Um, I think the first. The first um, modus one I went in, I didn't really know what to expect, and I think I've won only won two games over the first two days. Then I got invited back with a uh, with a nice group with Tony O'Shea and the, the older guys, and yeah, you know, I managed to get through that one. I played played pretty well, and um, yeah, I've just had a, a, another bit of a poor one a couple of weeks ago with it. So um, yeah, you know, it's difficult. You playing it sort of twenty five past nine in the morning. Yeah, I find that find that quite difficult. Probably be better off in the evenings. But um, yeah, it's, it's the Modus is a fantastic tournament. I mean, there's so many players coming through from it. So <laughs> these guys are putting me off. They're on about playing for fifty pound a leg. <laughs> That'd be dead, Andy, wouldn't it? non bar players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it hundred. <laughs> no, so, um, make it worth your time. Yeah, yeah. No, so yeah, no, the Modus is fantastic. I mean, it's a lot of darts, and um, there's so many players that are coming through it that you've never heard of, which are which are all making, you know, a lot of them making a name for themselves. And uh, yeah, it's another another fantastic uh, um, thing for the calendar. And obviously, you know, what Steve Brown, my business partner, is running in from the five one bars is the the ADC and the JDC, and there's there's actually there's so much darts to do, as a, and it's not just all about the pro tour now. You can you can top the round around the outskirts and um, and do okay. Definitely, and for you now, then, what does the rest of 2023 look like? First of all, are we going to see you in Blackpool in a few weeks, trying to get that golden ticket, get another chance to play Phil Taylor? Yeah, I just uh, just booked up my hotel yesterday, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that in Blackpool. Back up in, uh, up in Blackpool again. It's been a few years since I played in the Winter Gardens, but you know, it'd be nice to go go back up and uh, yeah, go on the Pleasure Beach. Have a little, have a little look around, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be nice. See some old faces. 
that's uh, a few weeks away. So what, what's the plan for, for the next few weeks to get yourself ready for that qualifier on the Friday night? Yeah, well, just, um, I'll, just, I'll just be practising in the 5 one bar um, a bit later on in the evening, I mean, a couple of hours a night, and uh, yeah, do, do a few, few stretches in the room and, you know, a few weights and just make yourself strong, and, uh, and I'll be ready for it. Well, Mark, it's a pleasure to chat to you. We do appreciate the time and wish you all the best for that qualifier in a few weeks' time and what else is to come in 2023 as well. Yeah, thanks very much. Sorry about the heckling I'm getting from uh, my sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, thanks, thanks for your patience as well.